right, the big thing is going to be able to identify, we call these conic sections. Now the reason why they're called conic sections is, and I wish I had one of the figures, they actually come from um, taking a cone uh, in 3D space, actually a cone with another cone stuck on top of it, so if the points are meeting in the middle, and what they do is they slice it, like they take like a vertical plane and they slice it. And what you end up with um, is that that creates an hyperbola. Um, if you slice it sideways, then that's where a parabola comes from. If you slice it horizontally, you get a circle. Um, I'm trying to remember where an ellipse comes from. No, the ellipse comes if you slice it on a on a angle. Uh, where's the parabola come from? Mm, I can't remember what creates a parabola. But anyway, that's why these are called conic sections. That's where that name comes from. It's, it's sections of a cone, okay? Um, but the, the main thing that we're going to focus on is being able to recognize their equations and understand a few things about them that they're going to ask you. So the first one we're going to look at are parabolas. Now you've been talking about parabolas for years, right? Since you very first started talking about algebra, after you did lines, then you moved on to quadratic functions, which create parabolas. But you've probably never seen them written in this form. Um, with a vertex, this is actually the vertex form of a parabola. Um, and the technical definition of a parabola is it's the set of all points in a plane that are equal distant. That means that they're the same distance from a particular line, which we call the directrix, and a particular point which is the focus. Now we're not going to really focus on the directrix and the focus, but that is the technical definition. So if you ever see these words, that's what they are. I'll show you what it, what it is here in a second when we sketch them. So we have two options when it comes to a parabola. You can have x minus h squared. That's the one we're used to. When the x is squared, we're used to those kind of parabolas. But technically, you can have a parabola sitting on its side if the y is squared. Okay, so when the x is squared, then it opens either up or down. That's what we're used to. We're used to parabolas um, that are either u's or that are hills. Okay, um, now if the y is squared, then it opens either right or left. It's just turned on its side. And if you think about it, if you were to solve this equation for y, then you would take the square root of both sides, and you know the square root looks like this, well, it just includes the negative square root as well. So that's why these open right or left. Wait, that can't be a function or anything. Right, it's not a function, but it is still a relation. Good point, okay? That's why we really don't talk about the y squared very often, because it's not a function. Okay, something called the focal length is this constant P, and that's true for both of these. Um, so this P right here um, that's on the right side of both of these equations, that's what we call the focal length, and the focal width is the absolute value of 4 times P. Okay, um, when we get to the equations here in a little bit, uh, that'll make more sense. Okay, so in general, let's uh, sketch a couple of examples here. Uh, let's say that our vertex is down here in the third quadrant, and let's just say here is when the x is squared. Okay, this would be the point H K is the vertex right there, and I don't want to draw it. Um, I'm just drawing an example. Okay, it, it could open down. I'm just drawing an example of if it were positive. Okay, so that point right there is the point H, K. Notice in the equation it's X minus H and Y minus K. You've got to change the signs when you pull them out. <clears throat> um, the directrix is a line below the function here. Now it doesn't show up on the graph, okay? It's just kind of one of those conceptual things. And then your focus is inside of the uh, curve. Now, I don't have the exact equation of this, so I'm just putting it in the general area. 
So this distance right here from the focus to the vertex is the P. The focal width is the distance through the focus to the sides of the parabola. Okay, that's the focal width. Makes sense, width versus length. Okay, so again, we're not going to get into the technical details of all that stuff. I just wanted to connect the vocabulary to what it is on the picture. Okay, and let me write that's the directrix. And every time I say directrix, I think of Harry Potter and Beatrix, but anyway, it's just a random connection there. Maybe it'll make somebody remember it. What? Yeah, I mean, that's the value. That's going to be the distance, okay? That is the actual focal width from, if you draw a line through the focus to the two sides of the parabola, that distance is going to be 4P, whatever, whatever that value is in that equation, okay? But it doesn't have to always be 4P. Yes, it's always 4P. That, that is what determines the width of your parabola. And that's why, think about parabolas um, when we have like 4x squared. Okay, that is, um, that is actually a uh, skinnier parabola because if it's with the x squared, according to this equation, it should be on the other side. So we've got to divide by the 4. So that would end up being 1 fourth. So it would be very skinny. Um, if it were 1 fourth x squared, that's actually a wider parabola. Um, so, anyways, again, this was, all of this information was a lot more useful before we had graphing calculators, but now your, your calculator will graph it. So, you know. But anyways, um, so if it's oriented on its side, Let's look at just a, a general example of that. Let's say, eh, let's pick the vertex here. Well, let's make a big fat parabola just for the fun of it. Okay, so this point right here is HK, the vertex. I don't know a good place to put it. Okay, it's HK. Uh, the directrix for this one, it might actually be the y-axis. Again, I'm just kind of shooting in the dark because I don't have the exact equation. Um, but that's my guess that this is the directrix. And our focus is about right here. So this distance is P. This distance from side to side is 4 times P. And so let me show you, for example, um, this point right here, if we measure from that point to the directrix and from that point to the focus, so obviously I didn't, I put one of those in the wrong spot because you can kind of tell that these distances are not the same, okay, but they're supposed to be to create a graph. All of these points, if, if I measure from the focus to the curve and from the curve to the directrix, I should get the same distance. That is the technical definition of a graph. Um, so I put one of the, the directrix maybe should be a little bit closer um, so that they have the same, same length there. Okay? That's the technical definition of a graph. Okay, circles. I mentioned this last week when we were talking about polar. Um, with the center of HK, the technical definition of a circle is that it's the set of all points that are equidistant from a particular point, the center. Okay, so you have a point in the plane, all the other points on the circle are the same distance from that center, and that distance is the radius. Okay, the standard equation for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So the center is going to be hk. I mentioned that last week. Okay, again, you've got to change the signs. When you take it out of the equation, you're going to change the signs. 
the radius is the square root of r squared. Now, I know obviously that equals r, but I make that distinction because people will tend to forget to take the square root. Um, I don't know why I put 69. 69 is not a perfect square. 64, okay? If this equation was equal to 64, let me go ahead and uh, put uh, a specific example here. Okay, say this was our equation. <clears throat> and actually, let me pick a smaller radius. Ooh, let's do 25, okay? So, let's say, for example, that was our equation. The center is going to be 2, negative 3. You change the signs. Positive 2, negative 3 is the center of this circle. It has a radius of 5. People forget to take the square root of that number over there. So the easiest way to draw this circle is to go up that many units from the, cent from the center. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's your top point, go right, one, two, three, four, five. Go left, one, two, three, four, five. And go down, one, two, three, four. Eh, I think it's a okay, and then I just kind of round the edges. I'm sorry, I was trying to conserve paper. So, <clears throat> That's the easiest way to draw a circle. Really quick, um, you can get your calculator to graph this if it's in standard form. Okay, so that's why we're not spending a ton of time on this, uh, on any of these, because the reality is if they ask you what's the graph of this look like, or if they ask you a question, something like if, if you can get it in standard form and then solve for y, then uh, you can you can just type it into your calculator. So if I were solving this equation right here for y, I would start by moving the uh, x, that entire expression right there. You can just subtract it from both sides. Take it off the left side, put it on the right side, stick a, neg a negative in front of it. Okay. Then we're trying to get y by itself, so we take the square root. Anytime you take the square root, you have to include the positive and the negative. Now, you cannot take the square root of those two things individually. It doesn't work because of this minus sign right here. You cannot take the square root of 25 and the square root of x minus 2 squared. I know you want to, but you can't. All right? And then last step is to subtract 3. So y equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x minus 2 squared is how you would um, be able to graph this on the calculator. Now you've got to graph it in two pieces. You have to do it in two pieces. Okay, you do the plus first. Okay, and then, uh, well, let me just show you that part. Okay, if you don't, if you only do the plus part, then you're going to get half of your circle. Now again, my window is not square. So that's why it doesn't look circular, it looks elliptical. All right, there's the top half of the circle. If I type in negative 3 minus the square root, you just got to be careful with all your parentheses and all that good stuff. Oops, too many. There's the second half of the circle. Now, there's not really a gap in the circle. Limitations of the calculator, okay? That's come up a lot lately. Um, but it is what it is, okay? So you can compare there um, and maybe be able to answer any question that they, that they need if you don't remember all this stuff.